you're watching Power Nation. It's full-on fabrication today on Carcass. We'll cut out the quarter panels on our 72 Road Course Camaro to make room for the new carbon fiber panels. We'll install a few key components for the fuel system, plus show you how we attach our new carbon fiber trunk lid. Hey everybody, welcome to Carcass. This is our 1972 Camaro that Jimmy and I are turning into a road course race car. We've done a bunch of work on this car already and most recently we've welded the roof skin on this so it looks like a Camaro again. And that's gonna kinda take us down our path we're going on today. We're gonna start working on some body mods. And so today we're gonna be focusing more on the rear of the car. We have some carbon fiber quarter panels that we've made already and I've mocked one up on the passenger side. So I'm gonna show you how I did that on this side here. We also want to cut out a polycarbonate sheet to replace our rear glass and we'll show you how we mount that. And we also have the carbon fiber deck lid and we want to mount that and still make it functional so it hinges like uh, the stock one would. But for this right here, I'm just going to start with some tape so we can figure out a cut line. Before we can get the new carbon fiber quarter panels on here, we want to get rid of the old steel. I'm using the tape as a guide to figure out where I'm going to cut and I'm making sure to keep a half inch to an inch of sheet metal that I can rivet the quarter panel to. So we've got this thing taped up. I've got a hole drilled and I'll explain why I'm doing that. When we go to cut this, it's best not to have sharp corners up here just because it leaves the metal more prone to cracking, especially with this thing vibrating so much. We just wanna make sure these are nice round edges uh, so it's less of a stress point. And then uh, these lines may change depending on how we fit up our carbon fiber quarter. So these aren't like the end all be all if we wanna grind and trim some stuff to move the lines back a little bit farther. We can do that too. Okay, so I have the quarter panel mostly cut out, but to fully release it, I actually need to get to the corner of the stock wheel lip. So, you know, everywhere along here, I need to grind so that the sheet metal releases. And to get to it, I need to get all this foam back off, or at least some of it, so I can get a grinder in there. So I'm just gonna take my screwdriver, shove it in here, hit it with a hammer, and just try to crack it off. The reason why the foam was on here in the first place is because it was used to shape our fender flares, which gave us the plug to mold the carbon fiber quarter panels. With the quarter panel removed, I'll start removing the paint on the edges so I can get a really clear view of what I'm working with. Yeah. 
got this rear quarter panel cut out now and I've got this kind of trimmed out, got these sharp edges taken care of. A couple things here about this. So I'm probably gonna end up coming back and cutting this way down, possibly cutting this entire lower section off and bracing it from the chassis to our new quarter. And the other thing too is that with this inner fender lip here, with our wide tires, if I left this, it would end up cutting our tires. So at some point we're gonna come back, cut this entire section out. We've got our carbon fiber quarter about 90% trimmed, which is good enough to fit this up right now. We're gonna put some Clecos in it, so I have to drill some holes. What do you got for a gap? You good? Yeah, I'm good here. Nice, these things are so handy. Yep, I love them. So that's pretty much it to get this quarter installed. Still got a little bit of trimming to do, but as you can see, this thing's really rigid up against the car, and I think that's gonna work out just fine. Up next, we'll show you a few tips on what to look for when installing the fuel system for your race car. Jimmy's got the carbon quarters installed on the Camaro and we did strip off all of the paint to give us a nice clean surface to work with. Now since we're in the back, we're gonna continue on with our fuel system. We already have a hole cut in the trunk for our radium fuel cell. Now we just have to work on getting the fuel into it. Now radium also sent us what we need to hook up a fuel neck to the fuel cell. They sent us this little 45, this goes on top of the cell itself. And they also sent us this really cool sleek fuel neck. Now two things to consider when you guys are looking for a location to mount the fuel neck. One is the drop or the angle of the tube as it goes into the fuel cell. And the second one is location. We're gonna mount ours up here on the quarter and on the back side of this filler neck is this little foam pad. Now the best part about this pad is you guys can mount this on a little bit of a curve, which works great because our quarter has a little bit of a curve here. So this should seal everything up. I gotta take a couple measurements. We're gonna drill some holes and then we're gonna work on putting the fuel tube in itself. All right, so before we put the neck in here, we're gonna go ahead and use this deburring tool. I'm gonna take the sharp edge off of the ridge here. And then we'll go ahead and set this in place. Try to keep the handle here straight with the car. We'll mark these out and drill these out as well. So we can go ahead and put the filler neck in. We will put that little piece of foam on there. We'll drop in a couple of the screws and then there's this retainer ring that goes underneath. And we'll tighten everything down. All right, now let's go to the filler tube. So up underneath here, we're gonna have to add this little 75 degree bend here. We got this one from Summit Racing. It's inch and a half OD, so it works with the rest of what Radium sent us. This will get us in the direction of the fuel cell. All right, so down here on the tank side, we'll add the adapter that came with the Radium stuff. Here's the other side of it. We'll screw this all down, and then we will add the piece of tubing that they also sent, and that should button all this up. All right, so then we'll go ahead and add the adapter on top of this piece. 
and then we'll pull a measurement from here, and then we can cut our tube. And that's gonna be 19. side on go to this side this is just all mock-up but it's super easy to install we got good drop on everything all right that works for the mock-up side of things radium makes some really nice products and this will work perfect in our Camaro so we'll call this all wrapped up here we'll go grab a couple more things and we'll finish out the back end of the car Coming up, with other racers staring at our taillights on the track, we want to make sure they can see them. Plus, we'll finish up installing our carbon fiber panels on the rear of our Camaro. So we've been working on the back half of the Camaro, and one of the things that we are going to retain on the stock side of things is a set of taillights. Ours are in pretty rough shape, and we want to make sure people can see us as we're entering the corner, applying our brakes. Now, Classic Industries was nice enough to send us a brand new set of taillights for the rear. They've got the nice chrome trim ring on here, and the lenses themselves are crystal clear. This is a great option for you guys that are doing any restoration work, or it works great for us even on the race car side of things. Now, beyond all of the taillights and stuff, they did send us a nose cone and a couple bits and pieces for the front. Our nose cone was pretty beat up somebody must have got in an accident so to get these installed it's pretty simple these just kind of unsnap from the buckets we'll get them set in the buckets here we'll install them in the car and then we're just going to worry about the wiring a little bit later Set these on here, they're a little specific on what side goes to where. Okay, let's get these set into place here. We'll bolt them down. To keep our new taillights and our buckets in place, we'll be using the factory speed nuts. These don't require a lot of torque, but will hold everything in nicely. Next thing up on the rear end of our Camaro is to get the carbon fiber trunk lid installed. And I'm really excited to see this thing in its full carbon trim. But to get it on here, I have to get these hinges to lay all the way flat. And how they're held up is there's a torsion bar that's underneath this cover that just runs from one side across to the other. So I've got to get that cover off and get those torsion bars out of the way. Now, if I'm being honest, I don't really need these springs to be functional anymore, so the easiest way to get rid of them is to just cut them. And they're obviously under a ton of tension, so one way to keep ourselves a little bit safer is to put something really heavy over the top of them. And this is just a rubber welding mat. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut one of the springs here, and I'll wear the appropriate PPE. We should be good to go. So now the next step is to figure out a way to get our holes transferred onto our deck lid so we know where to drill them for our rivet nuts. We think the best way to do that is to use paint pens, color the top of the hinges, put the deck lid on it, give it a nice press, and hopefully that paint transfers to the underside of the deck lid, and then we'll know where to drill the holes. All right, we got enough on there. I think so. Yeah, let's try this. And give it a shot. Line up the end, get our gaps right. Yeah. All right. Think so? Yep. Get the press on there. Yeah. All right. See what happens. There you go. There you go. That works. So we did end up putting a little bit of uh, paper towel under here and put tape on it so it can kind of conform. 
that's gonna be perfect for us to drill some holes. Nice. Cool. I'm gonna get some drill bits and some rivet nuts. After drilling some pilot holes, I'll go ahead and drill to the final size for the rivet nuts. That is the install of our carbon fiber deck lid. This thing's looking really nice. Got about a 3 16 gap all the way around, which is perfect. Now we just need a way to latch this thing down. Now that our trunk lid is installed, we need a way to secure it. We'll show you a quick and easy way to keep it locked in place. With our deck lid installed, we need some way to keep it secure. And the way we're gonna do that is by using a latch system that you've probably seen on race cars before. These are arrow catch latches that we got from Summit Racing. And the way that they work is pretty simple. You have your latch here. If you open it up, take your pin, go ahead and install it, shut it. Gives you a nice secure connection. So with these, we have to mount the pin somewhere on the car, mount the latch onto our carbon fiber deck lid. So to get started, I'm gonna cut some metal. To mount the pins, I'm using one eighth inch plate cut into a one inch strip. Got a strip of metal cut out that I'm gonna to use to make two L brackets. They're gonna to weld to the inside of the taillight panel and then they'll each have a hole so we can mount our pin. Now I wanna locate the pins somewhere in the flat areas here on the underside of the deck lid. That way when we mount the latch, we don't have to cut into the three-dimensional structure of the deck lid, which makes it nice and rigid. So the way I'm gonna locate that is I'm gonna use my tape measure. Just measure from each edge of the deck lid, figure out where that's gonna go, and then I'll measure just from the edge of the car and the outer edge of the deck lid opening. That way we can figure out how long our bracket needs to be and where the pin's gonna be located. Uh, about 11 and a half from the edge. After cutting the strip to length, I'll put a 90 degree bend in it to give some area to weld to. I've got my L bracket here with the pin bolted to it, and now I need to figure out where I need to weld this on the inside of the taillight panel. So what I have mocked up here is just a long ruler that kind of gives us a height gauge. And then basically I'm gonna take our 10 and a half to 11 inch measurement that I had on the deck lid, go from the 50 inch mark that I have on the left side. I'll go over to 39 and a half, make sure the pin's about at the height of the ruler. And then I'll mark this so we know where to place it when we weld. Now I'm back on top of the deck lid and I'm getting ready to trace out the template for our latches. And I did a couple things to help myself out. The first thing is I made a center line down the deck lid and then I picked a reference point. Then I used a straight edge to go from the hole to the reference point and I traced out the center axis of our latch. And what this does is I can then measure from each hole to our reference point and I know that they're within a 16th so I know everything's gonna be symmetrical and the angles are gonna be mirrored. So now I can just use the hole and our center axis and I can line this up on the template, trace everything out.
To get rid of the material in the deck lid, I'm using a hole saw to remove the bulk of it, and then I'll come back and trim it up to the line. There we go, that's one installed. I still have one more to do. I still need to finish welding these brackets and stuff on the inside, but we've gotten a ton of work done on the rear end of this car, getting all the car remounted. We still have some stuff to do, like the rear windshield, which we're gonna show you guys another time, but I still have a lot of work to do, so I'm gonna get at it.